Hello, I'm Bree. It's fun to have this kind of mic instead of one over a piano today. And uh, I'm just really excited to be here. Thank you to Pastor Reese on sabbatical for letting me share today. Um, I take this very seriously, and I'm really honored that I get to share something that I love and hold so dearly to my heart, which is worship, if you couldn't guess. Um, I just first want to recognize what's happening in the room right now. I want to recognize the presence of the Lord because we just had a very sweet time of worship. There is a fragrance that was released. Just being down here is way different than it is to be on stage because I've got a lot of things going on in my in-ears when I'm singing. And to just be able to be quiet and be still and hear you guys singing, it is just very beautiful. It really ministered to me this morning. A little bit about myself. My husband, Aaron, is playing guitar today. He's great. We met playing uh, for a church. We worshiped together for a long time. We've got a lot of ministry under our belts, and um, worship has just been so important to me, like, my whole life. I really felt called to it uh, when my family and I lived in China, And then I went to a school of worship, and I fell even more in love with it. And then all this, like, crazy cool stuff started happening. I got to serve at an awesome church in Colorado Springs, and uh, things started happening pretty quickly. I was very young. I was, like, 18 to, like, 25, so it's not that long ago, but, you know. I was just kind of climbing the ladder of, like, success in worship and thought I was so cool. And then, guess what? I totally lost the whole purpose of what worship is. I thought I was giving this sweet fragrance every time because that's what it looked like. It looked like I was doing all the right stuff for worship. It looked like I was singing songs so pure and holy before the Lord. And I, I mean, I thought I was, but I was living another life. So I want to talk today about the importance of our aroma, of our incense. I want to talk about what happens when we lay ourselves down at the feet of Jesus. I mean, Lex basically just preached the whole sermon that I was going to do in his transition. So (laughs) he even brought up his grandma, which is coming later. So (laughs) that's great. (laughs) But we get to talk about ministering to the heart of Jesus. Of course, I have my own thoughts on what worship is. And I'm going to share those of what I think it is and who I'm excited to talk about today. But... I asked a few of my friends who I've grown up with in the worship community um, that I've considered spiritual fathers, spiritual uncles, whatever, just really close friends of mine that I uh, have trusted with worship. First one. So these are how they would define worship, by the way. Worship is recognizing God as supreme over all and surrendering my life to his will and his ways so that I might love, honor, and serve him. That's great. Worship is a real-time adjustment to the reality of our future. That's a good one. That's like tweet it or exit or whatever you call it. I don't know the words. But that's like a cool one-liner, right? That is just a beautiful way. This is our real-time adjustment to the reality of what we get to do forever. That's beautiful. This is Lex right here. Worship is the one thing we can give the Lord that he can't return to us. God cannot return worship to us. We can only give it to him. That's what we're called to do. Worship is our privilege. Worship is our love expressed. Worship is affection, devotion, adoration, and gratitude that is voiced, articulated, and lived. And what I think worship is, is that it illuminates our hearts to the complexity and the mystery and the beauty of Jesus. It's like a light comes on and you just get to see him for who he is. This last one is from a spiritual father that has walked with me through a lot of my life. Worship is the response of all that we are to all that God is, says, and does. Worship goes far beyond music or singing. It's the way we live our lives before him. It's how we conduct our lives in obedience to him. So yeah, I'm not just talking about the singing worship today. I'm not talking about the instrument worship today. I'm talking about our worship that comes from the way we live our lives, from the way uh, that we give ourselves as a sacrifice to God. 
the definition of worship, I mean, you can't put it in some like succinct and catchy line. It's not it's not that. There are so many ways that we express our worship. There's so many ways that we express our heart before God, and we get to experience all of those. We get to see and smell and feel the beauty of Jesus when we enter his presence. Our worship isn't like incense. It is incense. When we think about the bowls of incense in Revelation 5 being filled with the prayers and worship of his people, I think today we filled it just a little bit more with our worship. When we sing about the beauty and the splendor of the Lord, what is that aroma? Do you feel the presence of the Lord? Do you feel as if you are experiencing heaven on earth? When we line ourselves with the beauty and the majesty of Jesus, there is a beautiful fragrance that comes. So why would it be for all of us? Why? I mean, why us? Well, I have some pretty clear instructions from David, who's like the boss of worship. He's written 150 psalms for us to sing thousands and thousands of years later. So I'm not going to make you guys exercise or anything, but I do want you all to stand. We're going to have another call to worship here as we get into the word. This is Psalm 150, the last the last chapter of the Psalms, he closes it out with a symphony of praise, and this is his encouragement. So if you feel encouraged and excited to praise, I want you to hear it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his holy sanctuary. Praise him in his stronghold in the sky. Praise him for his mighty miracles. Praise him for his magnificent greatness. Praise him with trumpets blasting. Praise him with piano and guitar. Praise him with drums and dancing. Praise him with loud clashing of cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everyone everywhere join in the crescendo of ecstatic praise to Yahweh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus, and we praise you, God. Thank you that your word lights us up. Thank you, Jesus, that your word is alive today, that we get to come before you and worship you and adore you. God, we give you our full attention. I give you my full attention. I'm just listening and speaking through you, Lord. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be pleasing to you, Jesus. We thank you for your nearness. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the beauty of your majesty, this gift of worship. We break open our perfume this morning and ask that there would be a beautiful fragrance just with us, leaving with us, staying with us, God. We thank you so much that you are right here. You're right here. Amen. You guys can have a seat. So yeah, why us? Because most translations say, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And I don't know about you, but you're sitting here, so that means that you have breath in your lungs, and that means you can praise the Lord. There is a difference between worship and praise, but our praise is exuberant. He is worthy of it no matter what. He is worthy of it because we have breath in our lungs. He's not worthy because of what he's done. It's just because of who he is. It's because he's beautiful. He wants to hear our worship. He loves the sound of your voice. There's something special, of course, about uh, you worshiping from your heart and just sitting in silence before the Lord. It's beautiful. It magnifies him. But I think there's something even more beautiful when you speak it, when you sing it, when you use your voice, there's a difference. There's a difference in just being like, no one knows what I'm thinking. But when someone can hear your exuberant praise or just your prayers of petition, Lord, I love you. I don't know what you're doing with me right now, but I love you. I thank you for where you're leading me. Just use your voice. Everything that has breath will praise the Lord. God is seeking us to worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 23, the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth because the Father seeks such as these to worship him. 
The most important thing that we can give is what emanates from our heart. God is seeking us out. Is he going to find you? He's seeking you out to worship him with everything that you have, even if it's this small, even if it's thank you for the breath in my lungs today. That is you worshiping in spirit and in truth. That is giving your beautiful offering. We want to give uh, what we have from our own soul, our heart to the Lord. And we don't challenge you on Sundays as a worship team. We don't challenge you every Sundays to uh, just sing whatever. We don't challenge you um, to just be quiet and watch us do our thing. We tell you, hey, lift up your own song. There's an encouragement that we have to do as we're trying to pull you into where we're going. We're not just trying to like take off and say, see you later. We're going to go have an encounter with God. We're trying to bring you with us every time. We want you guys to experience and to use your voice to lift up your song of adoration. Worship isn't about how it makes us feel. And I think a lot of us struggle with that. I struggle with it as a band director, as a worship leader who cares about excellence, maybe sometimes a little too hard, where I've forgotten what it's about. So when I get to stand here today and not be thinking about, did they mess up? What'd they do? What's happening? What's happening behind the scenes? It was, I was, it was so easy. It like blew me away how easy it was to just be right into worship. But when we walk in on a Sunday morning and say, hmm, I don't like this song. Hmm, I don't like who's singing that song. Hmm, the mix is too loud. Hmm, I'm hungry. Hmm, sports are on. It's any distraction that we can possibly think of. Hmm, I had a bad night's sleep. When we focus on any of those things, Instead of ministering to the heart of God, if all we're giving is 30 minutes on a Sunday and we say, well, I was distracted the whole time and I didn't really care for it. What? (laughs) What are you doing? What are we doing? If that's where our heart is, and I know that seems like a harsh message, but I care so much about the gift of worship, about breaking open our perfume, about an offering that costs us something. If you say, okay, I got to lay all of these things down before I step into the church, so be it. Do it. Just lay it down because he is worthy of our worship in spirit and in truth. Worship isn't even about us getting an encounter or a blessing or goosebumps or tears. Those things usually inherently happen just because how good God is. But if that's what we're focusing on, well, I didn't feel anything today. Hmm. That's a pretty sad way to experience worship. That's a pretty sad way to experience the king. We just want to minister him. We want to minister to him. If we focus on anything besides ministering to him, we allow the aroma that it carries to be taken away. It's gone. It's like that. If we focused on anything self-serving, self-focused, it's gone. I think of the angels and how they surround the throne 24-7, day and night. They are singing, holy, holy, holy. They can't contain it. They cannot stop singing that because he's so beautiful, because he's so worthy. Just imagine the aroma. Imagine the smell of God's people worshiping him with everything they have. There's no distractions in the world. They're locked in for all of eternity to say, holy, 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 worthy is the lamb who was slain. What does that smell like, guys? It's pretty intense. I also don't think that we can worship in spirit and truth if we haven't seen it. I think people sing what they've seen. And so I know Probably everyone in this room has experienced some kind of miracle. So sing about that. Sing about the, if you focus on one facet of Jesus. For me, it's like I can always be taken right home when I think of his mercy. When I think of the forgiveness 
and the love he poured out for me. I'm just, I'm in. I'm locked in. So if you have a miracle of healing, if you have a testimony of grace, if you had supernatural joy come in your life, that is your reason to sing. That's your reason to worship. When you sing what you've seen, it's an authentic sound. It can't be faked. It's not made up. It's a really beautiful aroma. It's an offering. I want to talk a little bit about David. He's somebody I look up to in the Bible, for sure. Pretty big worship giant. As I said, he worshiped his way through battle. He worshiped after he committed pretty big sins. And he worshiped as a king. His worship expressed like every range of human emotion. There was praise, there's thanksgiving, there's repentance, there's supplication. And David left an aroma for us to experience that worship. Thousands of years later, we still read the Psalms and are brought to our knees. We still read the Psalms and we just experience what he was experiencing. I mean, you just like, it, you could read any Psalm and it would apply to a situation in your life. It's crazy how beautiful these songs are. And can you imagine in the, any area that David was writing these Psalms, what that smelled like? That he was just locked in. He's a man after God's own heart. What was the aroma? Was it beautiful? I bet it was. Because he was so in to the kingdom of God. He was so in the presence of God that he smelled like Jesus. Psalm 27, 4. One thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of God all the days of my life delighting in his perfections and meditating in his temple. The thing I seek most, Passion Translation says, I want to live with him every moment in his house. What is that like? I don't get that every time. To spend every moment in his presence to seek him first above anything else, what is that aroma? What is that? It's so beautiful. I have to be in the presence of God. I have to seek his face. I have to bow and worship him because he's beautiful and because he's worthy. I've got a friend, uh, another lady who I learned most of, a lot of my worship stuff from. She was like kind of who started it and experiencing the Holy Spirit and trusting his voice with prophetic songs. And she was a pianist, so I loved learning from her on that as well. And uh, the past four years, she's just been walking through it. The hardest season that I could ever imagine or like never wish upon someone, you know, just can't stand, can't walk around, can't sleep, just horrible, horrible, just darkness and yucky that she is walking through. And she'll post these things on Facebook sometimes or send out messages. And uh, in the past few years, she's written a few songs. And you think of the aroma there. When she's singing, I'm waiting for my healing. I'm waiting for my breakthrough. But I will praise you. I still have a reason to sing. I have four awesome kids. I have a reason to sing. I have an awesome husband. I have a reason to sing. When things like hit the fan, which they do in life, what is your aroma going to be? Will you be known as someone who worships the Lord in spirit and in truth in every trial? Every victory, too. We always have to be focused on the Lord. No matter the outcome, you're worthy. She's probably someone singing Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Nothing. Right where I'm supposed to be. You lead me beside still waters and you restore my soul. 
Even though I'm walking through the darkest valley of death, I fear no evil. You're with me. What happens when we sing those songs? What happens when we speak those words? I believe that there is worship and there is fragrant offering before God. Lex mentioned in the transition to be like Mary, to break open our alabaster jar. That's proskuneo. That is the word for bowing low and kissing the feet of Jesus. Is that what our worship looks like? When we're not afraid to bow low, to bend our knee, to kiss the feet of Jesus, to break open our perfume in every situation, no matter the cost, you're worthy. God is interested in our whole heart. That's all he wants. He's worthy of nothing else, nothing less. I want to mention the songs that we sing from our heart, the ones that, you know, you're maybe driving into work and you're just praying, Lord, please be with me today. Those songs release a fragrance that is smelled after we're gone. And uh, I love cooking. Some people know that. I love hosting. I already said I was going to mention Lex's grandma. Here she is. I love cooking and hosting and doing it all. And I want it to smell awesome. I want the food to taste awesome. Like, it's all got to be under control. And uh, Aaron and I live in an apartment with, like, a long hallway. And so if people come over, it's like, we could smell that when we got off the elevator. Mm Mm-hmm. You sure could. And... (laughs) When they walk in, is that you I smell? Was that you? Yep, sure was. And do you want people to ask those questions when you leave, when you or enter the room? It's like, is that you I smell? Were you in the presence of God? You must have been. Something's different. You smell like the fragrance of heaven. You smell like you have given an offering to the Lord. So when we're driving into work, what is our aroma? Have we been in the presence of the Lord? Have we sought him with everything that we have? Have we given him every moment in his house to say, Jesus, you are with me this morning as I get my children ready for school. God, you are with me this morning as I get ready to send this very difficult email or make a hard call or God, you are with me always. I truly believe that there is going to be an aroma that is released from our hearts to magnify Jesus and to attract people to us. 2 Corinthians 2, 14 through 15. Thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads in every place the fragrance that comes from knowing him. We are the aroma of Christ to God. I thought about calling this message, how do I smell? And it didn't work. So (laughs) aroma was better. (laughs) But how do we smell? How do we smell? I'm not talking about after a workout. I'm not like, get it out. I'm saying, how do we smell to the people around us? Do we smell like we have spent every moment in his house? Do we smell like we have given him an offering Do we smell like we have spent time in his presence and we're afraid of nothing? The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Is that the song that we're singing? Is that the gift that we are bringing? Paul, speaking of us believers, is having a fragrance, a spiritual aroma that's evident to God and to those around us. This aroma, what we've been talking about, is the result of our worship, our devotion, And our lives lived in Christ. So yes, while I love the sing song, thank you, praise you, Jesus, worship. I'm talking about our worship that is our lives lived before him. It's not confined to words or songs. It is our offering that emits a sweet fragrance that is pleasing to God. I want to be an offering that's pleasing to the Lord. 
I don't come here on a Sunday and just fake it for you guys. Of course, there have been times where, man, I just did not spend every moment in his house. But we can always come before the throne of God with boldness. He invites us into his presence every moment. He's right there with you. He's talking to you right now. I want you guys to close your eyes. I just want to pray that there is a fragrance that is released from all of us that is pleasing to God. Heavenly Father, you are beautiful. You're the reason we sing. You're the reason we worship. We lay our lives before you. For those feeling like, well, I don't know how to give my offering. I pray that you would just break down those walls. I pray that we would look a little bit more like Jesus today. I pray that we would smell a little bit more like we've been in your presence. That we've stayed close to your heart, Jesus. I pray that there would be a release of worship in this house. That we'd take it seriously. And we'd say, man, the angels get to do this all the time. Why don't I? Oh, illuminate our hearts, Lord. To all the different facets of who you are. Your mercy, your kindness, the hope and the joy that you give. The forgiveness that's ours for the taking. We thank you, Lord, that you don't hold anything back, so we will not do that either. We will give you our whole selves, our whole heart, our whole attention. Help us to be more like you in the morning and in the evening. When I rise, give me Jesus. We thank you for the fragrance of your presence. Thank you for what you're doing here at Encounter Church. You're just releasing something so sweet. We're so honored to know you, Jesus. We're so honored to be in your family. We're so honored to be considered a friend of God. You are our shepherd and we lack nothing. We just lay ourselves before you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Would you go before and behind us today? Would you surround us with your glory? Would you surround us with joy as we have our conversations? Would you surround us with your presence? We entrust all that we are to you. We bless your holiness, Jesus. We bless your holy name, your merciful name, your kind name, your providing name your healing name, Jesus. And all God's people said, amen, amen.